Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I mean to you live from the outskirts of the internet. This is the Gaming Saloon for July 11th, 2014. With your host, two four four eight, and ramp it up, Salon. And you tried to do the Rift Tracks intro. I know I did. I know I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You know, we're act I believe we're actually doing the show on Seth and Eleven's birthday. I I'm not kidding on that. Hmm. Hmm. I'm pretty sure Seth. Mm -hmm. Oh, that only listed 1927. <laughs> Oh, it doesn't say. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're doing the show officially on 7 Eleven's birthday. <laughs> Unofficially. Yes. And we, we have fun things to talk about. Oh, yes, mm. we do. And first up on that, EA explains why it abandoned uh -oh. 3DS and Vita for phones and tablets. Essentially going, we're, we're dropping handheld gaming for mobile gaming. Because reasons. Uh, their explanation from Mr. Peter Moore, COO of EA. Uh, we were supportive of both uh, 3DS and Vita, but they mm -hmm. have, but then you've got finite resources and you've got teams that say, we really think that two or three years from now, these are the platforms that people are going to be on and going to be consuming games on. And you look at the quality of what you can do on phones and tablets. Sometimes strategy is not about what you do, but what you don't do. And you have to make some hard calls and you've got to only, you've got only so many people. To my point, we're going to be planning for FY17 and 18. Do you think the Vita and 3S are going to be around in some shape or fashion by then? on a scale level. Uh, also hopes the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One will still be around then. And comment relates to that, but nothing too interesting. So yeah, essentially, look, we ain't, we ain't got the people or the budget to be doing this, so we're going to do other things. Hmm. That's essentially what it breaks down to. Pretty much, yeah. Kind of, kind of both smart and a little strange to think of at the same time. There, well, I can understand the Vita to a certain extent because how much stuff do we have on the Vita these days? Yeah, 3DS though, it's that's grown, that's been grown for a little, for the last little bit. I think there might be something there for the Vita soon, or not the Vita, the 3DS. Although I have no idea what he means by FY17 and 18. I don't either. <laughs> Thanks for using those business terms and not translating for the rest of us. Yeah. Quick. Done. I was expecting something stupid. A little more but than that. Yeah. Uh, I was expecting something stupid, actually. I'm like, oh, this is EA. It's probably some stupid reason they did. No, it's just budget. Which is something WWE has ran into. Countless times. Oh, they're running into it now. They're making, like, swaths of budget cuts. Just in... So they can be back to making money, essentially. <laughs> they, they cut Fandango's entrance set. <laughs> Jeez. They, uh, they've, uh, let's see, cut like 11 people off the roster. Santino's retired. Although he might be moving into a out-of-ring position someday. Which would be fine for him. I think he could pretty much survive for like the next 20 years in an off, uh, in an out-of-the-ring position. 
Yeah. All right, then. Little, little, our little warm-up out of the way. Next up, Money Number 9 is doing another crowdfunding campaign and also tease a cartoon show. Because we need a cartoon show for this, obviously. Yes, because the game isn't even out yet. Yes. I forgot to put mark where videos weren't, were not. Realize that. Ah, I yeah, I know. I, I don't think any of them I wait, no. Fuck. <laughs> you did too! <laughs> I think one of them was. I see it. Yeah. I see it's videos and... Alright. Uh... Do, do, do. Watching the raised. announcement. Uh, I was going to say the teaser, because I don't think there's anything in the announcement. Oh, okay. I was going to queue it up, that way we can talk about the Everything in our marriage article. was lost What the fuck, Ad? The lies, the money... Thank you, Ad. Fucking YouTube. Anyway, uh, after raising nearly $4 million, uh, uh we're looking to generate some more. Do, do, do. And the reopening crowdfunding support. Uh, new funding will strictly go towards additional content not promised in the original crowdfunding campaign. The first go is full English voice acting, which will cost $100,000. That's either why I'm asking way too much or, or a sign that the game will have a lot of talking in it. As the article puts it. They also kind of state that either way, that's not necessarily good news. Probably not. Huh. Uh, they've also partnered with Digital Frontier on a Mighty Number no. Nine animated series. We I mean, got the trailer queued up here in a bit. And taking out the Kickstarter to see what new stretch skills we're talking about. I just look over. There we go. We're back. <clears throat> where where did we cut off at? I don't know. Oh. I just looked over and it was at zero. And I was like, damn it. And... Fuck. And all the other nice words. Mm. Uh, well. Yeah. I, I was about to say, it looks like they've only raised about $9,000. And it looks like they're going to be doubling that goal number, but we'll get Japanese English in English voice acting. Hmm. Oh, well, yeah. And they already look to have another stretch goal planned. As there is a tease for it. Hmm. So, yeah. Not sure how to think about this. I mean, on one hand we have, Hey, Mighty Number no. 9 wanting to do more stuff with their game. So they're wanting to get more funding for it. On the other hand, I go, how is this impacting the development of the game? And was everything, was your $4 million not enough the first time around? You know, I'm sure that's a question everyone who donated money to this Kickstarter is kind of wondering now is, what happened? Is, is what I did not enough? Is... There's something else that we need to be talking about here. Yeah. Oh. Because right, right now I'm kind of even wondering why. Yeah, I don't know. Anime series seems a bit presumptuous. <laughs> like, yes, Mighty Number no. 9 is going to turn into this huge phenomenon, so we're going to get an anime series out as soon as possible. Okay. Why? Because <laughs> my number nine is supposed to be the next Mega Man. Literally. <laughs> I mean, what is Capcom doing with Mega Man? <laughs> it 
Like, literally, what is Capcom doing with Mega Man? You know what I'm say... most wondering? What? If we aren't literally buying the rights to Mega Man now. <laughs> Maybe that's a stretch goal. It's like, like $12 million. We buy the rights to Mega Man, and we make a crossover game. Mm -hmm. Well, what I mean is, okay, Mighty Number no. 9, they did that as an idea. Yeah. Looks like Mega Man. Made by people who made Mega Man. And not just Sinifune. Yeah. Like, people throughout Mega Man's history are on this project. Um. Plays like Mega Man. Uh huh. Capcom has yet to say anything. Mm hmm. I wonder if this is just a case of. They went to Capcom and said, we want to make another Mega Man, but we don't want to do it under you. And Capcom was like, okay, show that there will be support and we'll talk. And now we're literally buying the rights. Because <laughs> I'm sorry, this feels... The whole thing from the start kind of felt a little too much like Mega Man. Yeah. And that's one of those where you're walking that fine line of copyright infringement. Uh huh. And the best Capcom has done is given Nintendo the okay to put Mega Man in Smash. Like, that's it. Nothing else. So, kind of makes you wonder. I'm, ha I'm, I'm waiting for them to be like some type of nod to Ma Mighty Number no. 9 and Smash Brothers with Mega Man. <laughs> Just to continue this weird, awkward relationship that these folks are going to have with Capcom. It's just like, we are going to do all this stuff that's not Mega Man, but Mega Man, and, and y'all going to not hit at it, and we're just going to keep going like it's nothing. Because I'm sorry, a platformer that's identical, in a sense, to Mega Man, mm -hmm. and Capcom's not said a word. I mean, literally, we've not heard any kind of threats about them wanting them to stop it or anything like that. And it's not like this thing's flying under the radar. Name me one major news source that has not covered Mighty Number no. 9 either the first time or this time. I mean... It seems weird to me. Why is Capcom not saying anything? And it, it, it's kind of making me wonder if it's a case of they're just trying to get the rights to Mega Man now. Connection lost. And... Connected. I just disconnected from the TeamSpeak server. Bravo. And peace ain't even here. Yeah. Um. Huh. But, yeah. I, all in all, I kind of wonder if Maybe this isn't just a... We're going to buy the rights to Mega Man, but not let you guys know about it, so... Yeah. Sorry about that. Phone call, because my mom's impatient. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh... my, my, dad, my dad left to get the power back on at the place where my parents work at, and my mom texts me, like, is your dad home? I text her, he's on his way there. No, has to call me as soon as I send the text message. <laughs> 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 oh boy I love my parents sometimes I'm just like e e e e yeah. alright take a look at this animated series teaser let's alright starting it up then in 3, 2, 1, go they were built to be ruthless to be our entertainment. 
But what if they tried to destroy us? As the world is ravaged, one robot will fight to save us from extinction. Hmm? Uh, I think there's been a mistake. Really? Okay. Beck was born. Beck was built to transform and annihilate his enemy. <laughs> A bit dry, aren't we? And a bit lump too. <laughs> now. He must become the hero in a deadly world. A world where everyone that tries to help is eradicated. Eradicated. He fights with intelligence. With courage. And with the fate of the world on his shoulders. Wow. Beck will show the world why they call him Mighty. Maybe. Okay, I'll admit it. It's got a nice sense of humor. <laughs> Okay, okay. A hundred thousand dollars for voice acting. Yes. For the game. Yes. They just did a teaser where they only had the narrator. Yes. Why do they need that much fucking voice acting in the game? Because that narrator is got why the contract? Mm -hmm. uh. I mean, he's a well-known... He, he's a, a, like a famous narrator. Really? Yes. You think? Yes. <laughs> oh, dear lord. Uh, I, I don't know. This just seems like... Straight out of left field and just odd. Uh, I don't know. Although I do like how they're trying to characterize Beck and Mega Man being different. You know, Mega Man doesn't act like Beck. Mm -hmm. True. Any thoughts before we move on? Not really, no. Alright, next up, we have some Halo 2 Anniversary stuff to talk about, straight from RTX 2014. That would be Rooster Teeth's own convention, because, or... Convention, really? That's a convention, I guess. Yeah. I mean, in the title, it's an expo, and honestly, I think it's more of just a celebration of gaming with and Rooster Teeth stuff. <laughs> Pretty much. Which, I wonder where's that? Where's the first episode of Volume Two of Ruby? Damn it! Seriously, it's supposed to appear at RTX. And I haven't haven't heard shit. Was that one of the events that got canceled? Well, remember we got the ta the uh, trailer for it. Yeah. And the trailer says the first episode's the twenty fourth. Oh, okay. Yeah, but still, we were supposed to fucking get it at RTX. <laughs> Not fucking three weeks. After! <laughs> I, I think what happened is it, it was one of the events they got cancelled because of a fire alarm. Because they had to cancel like two events because of a fire alarm. Wow. And that might have been one of them. Although I know the Ruby panel still happened because I think they all had each of the voice actors uh, actresses dress up as their characters for the panel. Because I know I've seen that in like the RT Life video. Although I still haven't heard anything about episode one, so where it? Eh. Like I said, twenty fourth. I will at least hear about what the hell happened with episode one. It's like, damn it! Uh, 
Unless everyone at the panel is like sworn to secrecy through a blood contract. Mm -hmm. That might be possible. It's like we're sworn to not talk about episode one at all. Or we die. Yes. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Halo 2 Anniversary. Uh, we got some brand new modes uh, coming to Halo 2 Anniversary. First up being Ricochet, which is a bot that, well, a game mode that came out of the uh, Forge stuff from Halo 4. Essentially, oh, it's. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah, it's kind of like a basketball kind of game. It can be done like that, or it can be set up in the format like Griffball is. <laughs> so, in a sense, it's either basketball or soccer. A uh, breakdown of that is two teams uh, try to score points by carrying or throwing a ball into the opponent's goal. So, basketball, soccer, sports, mm -hmm. essentially. It's your ball sports. Mm -hmm. We've got race, which is the race we've gotten in, like, Halo 3 onward. Uh, SWAT, which is just headshots. Headshots are the only thing that matter in this game. Yeah, no shield, no motion tracker. Yep. And I believe faction. SWAT actually started in Halo 3 also. Probably. I know it was in Halo 3. I know that for sure. But I don't think you can actually make the SWAT game type in Halo 2. Well, there is, there is one game type that got made in Halo 2. And has been a staple of Halo multiplayer ever since. <laughs> Infection. I thought that was yep. three with the VIP uh -uh. stuff. No, two. Hmm. It was in two. It was in two because you could have unlimited sword. <laughs> of course, keep in mind, three. multiplayer wise, I didn't start till three. Yeah. Campaign wise, I was from the start, but yeah. Yeah. Three introduced it officially, but it got its start in two as an unofficial mod. Ah. Or not mod mode. Just like how race was an unofficial mode in three. Under VIP. Yep. And Ricochet is an unofficial mode in Halo 4, but now it's official. Because people love Ricochet, I guess. And three four three said, "Hey, what the hell?" Well, we'll we'll accept Bungie's policy of yes. Let's uh, keep going with stuff like this. Uh, this isn't the end of the list. There will be many more to come. Uh, three four three. They confirm that coagulation will be one of the multiplayer ma arenas included with the remake. Which Better. that's the. <laughs> That was kind of the multiplayer map for both Halo 1 and 2. Well, yeah, it's Blood Gulch. I mean, they they show up to R they show up to RTX. I swear, if and, they'd and showed not... up to RTX and said that coagulation, Blood Gulch, whatever the fuck you want to call it, was About not out. in there. No, Valhalla is a different setup. Oh, Same concept, be... but different setup. Oh, I thought that was supposed to be the spiritual successor uh, successor to it. I'd say it probably was. But nothing beats Blood Gulch. True. Mm -hmm. And, you know, based off of what that map is called, you can tell whether they played Halo 1 or 2. Because <laughs> people that focus CE will call it Blood Gulch every time. Yeah. People that focus Halo 2. We'll call it coagulation every time. Anyone who watches Red vs. Blue will call it that one box canyon that people eh, that people are in. <laughs> no, they actually have called it by Blood Gulch in the show. I know. But it's still just that one box canyon where all these schmucks live. Which, which there again, they call it Blood Gulch. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> Of course, they were also going off Halo. They started off with Halo 1. Yeah. Uh, hmm. 
But yeah, uh, they I, also was, I swear if three four three had showed up and said that wasn't going to be in there, heads would have rolled. <laughs> yeah, that, that probably had to be the prerequisites that to for them to be there. It's just like you must bring like the blood coagulation, blood gulch to RTX. That is your prerequisite for showing up here. Otherwise, just don't even fucking bother showing up. <laughs> uh, uh, also, they're going to be adding in some new twists. For example, the mongoose. Or with a gun on it. Called it the gun goose. Called the stupid idea. <laughs> Aw, but it, it makes the mongoose viable as a vehicle now. I mean, the okay. best thing you could... But I've got two problems with that. Okay. One, the mongoose's original purpose was simply transport. Nothing more. It was supposed to go faster than the warthog, therefore the reason why it had no weapons on it. Number two, 343 is not going to have the brains enough to take out the mongoose and only have the gun goose in there. They're going to have both. And do you know how stupid that's going to make some of the maps? As stupid as having a civilian warthog in a, a multiplayer? Pretty much. Yeah. But but we could have that mul that multi-seater that's hitting more people than the regular warthog. Yeah, so you could get more of your teammates <laughs> killed at once. <laughs> Aww. Uh, I, I'm kind of anti-gun goose. Just, all, yeah. Oh, they're also putting the silence SMG in there from uh, ODST. Sweet! ODST's getting some love! <laughs> <laughs> or at least a reference. Because <laughs> that's where the silence SMG is from. It's from ODST. Because, you know, the the whole point of ODST it was it was supposed to be more stealthier. It was a, supposed to be a stealthier game. At least in the open world stuff. Also, the assault rifle's in there, so I'll actually be able to be good at this multiplayer. <laughs> that sucked, that Halo 2 multiplayer. Because there was nothing like, well, like the assault rifle that was good. Yeah. yeah. The fucking uh, SMG sucked. Yeah. That, your best alternative was what? The plasma rifle? Yeah. And mm. not the brute plasma rifle. That fucking thing was a piece of shit. What, the Rasma rifle? Yes. <laughs> yes. Let's see. Speed boost mongoose, uh, improvements additions, modernization... Or modernization, modernization weapons, weapon sets... Uh, lacked mid-range weapons choice. Uh, magnum tuning in vehicles. Oh, they're messing with the Magnum. Are they making Oops. it better? No, they're going to make it a pea shooter. Mm -hmm. That's what it already is. Oh, wait, no, no, it's going to be a reverse. No, it's, oh, it's going to damage it's gonna you? Heal. No, it's going to heal people. Oh, huh? That well, way you have a reason to shoot people. Well, you know what? You know what? That would actually be better because the pistol for Halo 2, it, it, all it does is hurt you. <laughs> it literally does not do enough damage, so you die before you can kill them. It's like, damn it, fucking pistol. Oh, Territories, Juggernaut are back. Juggernaut hasn't been in the game in a while. In the Halo game in a while, I want to say. Since like three, maybe it might have been in reach as a staple three. As far as in a game, it was in reach. Okay, but like I said, as a staple three, because really they didn't push Juggernaut at all at reach. Ah, Juggernaut was kind of fun. Yeah, it was kind of it was like reverse zombies. I would like to see, you know, one of the new game types they haven't mentioned in there. Uh, damn it, I drew a blank now. The other Slayer variant in Halo 4. 
Uh, 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 fuck. Fuck. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, I have no idea what you're talking about. Regicide. Oh yeah, Regicide. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is well in a way that is Juggernaut, but you don't get bonuses as a Juggernaut. But I mean, if they're adding Juggernaut, I'd like to see like a Juggernaut Regicide playlist. Yeah. First, I think the only difference between the two would be uh, the perks uh, for Juggernaut. Yeah, and, and it's not, and there's less focus on killing the Juggernaut and more focus on killing other people, other people plus the guy who's the king. Regicide isn't about killing whoever's top. It's just top gets bonuses over time. Oh, you know what would be even better? What? Combining the two. Juggernaut aside? Yes. Or, no, Reginaut. <laughs> Reginaut, that's a far better title. Yes. <laughs> that, that would be kind of epic right there. Well, good things to come for Halo 2 Anniversary. Don't yep. know if I'm picking it up. <laughs> well, you don't have an Xbox One. Exactly. So, you pretty much know you're not going to pick it up. Alright, next up, we got some news from Mr. Cliff Bowinski, former head of Epic Games, who now owns his own studio, uh, or for me, the game's designer, Cliff Winsky. Uh, his new company, Boss Key Productions, will be doing a uh, arena shooter. Well, sci-fi arena shooter that is free to play. Just called Blue Streak. That's a, um combination there free yeah. to play arena shader so a MOBA but it's a first person shooter I guess or maybe oh, maybe it's like a oh, what was uh, it quite live oh. no not that uh, more Is of that... a team based one that's kind of what I'm thinking of right off hand as far as arena shaders might be more of that, but I'm trying to think of the other game. It was uh, a lot more about teams. It pretty much was a MOBA, but it was a third-person shooter. As well. I forgot what it was. I think it was like Saturday Night something. I forgot it. It was, it was like... Uh, came out like three, Monday three Night ago. Combat. Yes, Monday Night Combat. That's what it is. I never played that's that what one. I, it looked alright. That, that's what I was thinking of. And apparently, uh, Cliff will be drawing a $1 salary until his new venture is profitable. Mm -hmm. Hmm. To be fair, I think he could do that. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget, this man was a part of Epic Games during Gears of War. And everything else Epic Games did mm -hmm. before he left. Mm hmm so he he he's got the cash to live on a on a dollar salary for like years. Oh yeah. But wait, what do you think? Do you think the this might turn out well? Mm, I don't know. It may provide a good. Uh, alternate to Unreal Tournament. Which we apparently have a new Unreal Tournament. Yeah. <laughs> Which, coincidentally enough, is being developed by Epic Games. Which I kind of figured Epic kind of let Unreal Tournament kind of die out again. Because you look how long it's been since anything major was done. True. 
Although I did play one when uh, I was in the gamers club for college. It's one of the games we played. Which one? Uh, one of the newer ones. I don't remember which year it was. It was Unreal Tournament insert year here. It was like 04 or something. Might have been that one. Hmm. Yeah. Here's, here's hoping the good things. Yeah. With, with Cliff, and, Cliff and his crew. I just, I don't know. It's going to be one of those as more comes out of it kind of deal. Yeah. All right. Well, now we get to some stupid. <laughs> Evil Within Centered in Japan. Gormo DLC unlocks Western version. Uh, All right, so, uh, you have to get DLC to actually play the game correctly. Right, no, you you get to you have to have DLC to get the not PG rated version of this game. <laughs> Uh, see, it's been edited out in Japan. Uh, do, 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 do. It's rated Z, uh, Zero Z, 18 and up. And we felt that it'd be best to release it that way. Uh, release it the way the creators make it. Uh, to, to Takoshi told Silicon Era. However, they would limit the sales and advertising, so we lose the opportunity to reach out as many customers as possible. So you don't do this for everywhere, you just do this for Japan? Even though I'm sure it has the equivalent of that rating here? <laughs> if it's not, I'm starting to really question gaming rating systems. Why can't we have equivalent ratings across the board, people? Seriously. It's been edited down to a 0D in Japan. However, the abolition of a previous rule that disallowed 0Z DLC for 0D games means that Gormo DLC can add the objectionable content right back to the 0D release. Yay! Loopholes! Right, right so, okay. Here's my big question. Do you actually have to pay for this DLC? Because if so, bullshit. What do you think? I don't know. No one has set a price. They're going to want you to pay for it. Okay, if so, that is absolute bullshit. Yes, we're going to edit down the game so it can reach a wider audience in one country, and we're going to release DLC in the same country so you can get the right game that everyone else in the world has gotten. <laughs> Brilliant! Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. What? Why? This seems like so much work for no goddamn good reason. Like, I am pretty sure Evil Within has the an equivalent rating stateside. More than likely, yeah. And, of course, Wikipedia, you don't list the ESRB rating. Fantastic. Really? No. Pull up the, uh, game like you're going to pre-order it. It should show it. Good point. No! It's rating pending! Mm -hmm. It's not rated yet stateside. Wow. Okay, I'll get this is all. Mm -hmm. This is... Why? It's gonna get a mature rating here, too. Like, seriously. That is gonna get a mature rating. 
Yeah, if that but... doesn't get a mature rating, I'm going I'm to slap somebody upside the face at the, at the ESRB because I'm like, what are you thinking? Okay, but look at this, too. Most of your shooters are M-rated. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yet you still have kids playing it. So yeah, mm -hmm. clearly the ESRB is not as dead set as the Sero system. And from what I understand, Japan and China and all them kind of countries, yeah, they're they're a hell of a lot stricter on stuff than we are. Oh. So uh, perhaps say, doing yeah. that actually would kill a lot of their numbers. That's possible. Where, whereas you look, it ain't nothing to see on TV an ad for the newest Call of Duty or the newest Battlefield or anything like that. On mm -hmm. any channel, really. I mean, it's one of those, as long as they can keep the TV commercial PG, then that's good enough. Whereas with there, it, more than likely, I would have to venture to say that if the game was rated 18 and older, they could only have an advertisement for 18 and older audience. Yeah. Whereas Although a lot here, of that, is that more... really don't fucking matter. <laughs> yeah. Although a lot of that is more retailer side. Just saying. ESRB doesn't have that much control. Mm -hmm. They can go, yes, we can rate this game. And yes, we can revoke the rating on, on a game any anytime we can. Yeah, they can do that. That Grand Theft Auto San Andreas proved that. They, they can literally do that. And most stores have a policy that they will not sell an AO rated game. At all. Which again... You, we get back to, this has been proven because if you go back and look into the whole Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, Hot Coffee Mod, Shenanigans, yeah, that, that, you, you get to see that play out. <laughs> but, a lot, a lot, yeah, a lot of that is retailer side. You know, why do you think they ask you for your ID if you're buying a mature game? Trust me, they do it to me, and I got a full beard. <laughs> But, they still did. They still asked me for ID. But see, that's what I'm saying. I, apparently, the SRB does not have as much power here as more than likely their Sero system has there. Yeah. More than likely, their system is tied in with all the other systems that write the sh TV shows, the movies, and all that fun stuff, too. Whereas here we have half a dozen rating systems for everything. Pretty much. And it all Every gets <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> Everyone's got a, got their own rating system. Mm -hmm. Music has its own rating system. TV shows think... have their own rating system. Movies have their own rating system. Games have their own rating system. It's like, god damn it, just tie them all together. <laughs> Comics have their own rating system. <laughs> They had a rating system imposed upon them by the Supreme Court before that got taken down. I, I want to say. <laughs> hey, you know what it's the, like, God damn it. Just tie them all together and be done with it. And you know what's the irony of that? What? Marvel was the first one to break away from the, from the rating system. You want to know why? <laughs> why? They could not release a drug awareness comic. Really? Yes. This was a Spider-Man comic that was supposed to be a PSA about drugs, and they couldn't release it under the under the rating system. Holy hell! <laughs> Literally, this is a thing. It's like wow. Rating system be broke. Yeah. It's like we have this drug PSA comic we want to release, to, you know, to talk about drugs with kids. About how not to do drugs and the addiction to drugs. No, you can't release it. Why? Because it ha because it's too graphic. Really? We're talking about drug addiction here. The shit ain't pretty. <laughs> what, what what do you want us to do? <sighs> yeah. Wow.
Also, I have an idea what uh, what's up with the picture for this article. What? I assume the, the picture for the article. Yeah. I, I I don't. I assume it's just some random thing somebody got for the article. Probably. Yeah. Uh, th this seems so much work for maybe not that much game. All right. Who's ready for more stupid? <laughs> Uh, everyone watching the stream. Okay. We're getting a Sharknado video game. Yes. Yeah. It happened. Yes. And as the subcaption says, it's for iOS, of course. Also, there's a sequel to the movie. I mentioned that uh, the, the MST3K people under Rift Tracks have a riffing on that movie that is out in theaters right now. And it's probably funnier than this movie on its own. Hmm. <laughs> <sighs> well... At the end of this month, on July 30th, you get to watch Sharknado 2. Uh... And on top of that, Majesco, Majesco and Other Ocean will be doing Sharknado to video game. An endless runner for iPhone and iPad. Uh, you run through the streets of Manhattan wielding a broadsword and ultimately grab a chainsaw and fly into the heart of a short NATO, destroying it from the inside. Why has this become a thing? Why? Why is this movie a thing? Because someone thought it was a good idea. You do realize there are half a dozen movies that sci-fi airs on a normal basis that are just as stupid as this, yet this is the one that catches on? Mm-hmm. I mean, you have, like, Megalodon and some other shit that I can't name off the top of my head. I'm gonna check their freaking guide right now just to see, like, what shit there is. The shady kind of shit. That shits. <laughs> see. Uh, darn it! I'm not finding anything. Darn it! Where are the shitty like monster versus monster movies on sci-fi? They air these all the time. Oh, meltdown, days of extraction, meteor apocalypse. <laughs> Not Dracula 2000, that's something completely different. Mm -hmm. Oh, ran out of space. But, uh, the, why? Why is Sharknado a thing? Is it just that dumb to be that entertaining? Apparently. <sighs> See, it's very much in the spirit of the films. Ridiculous. Overblown, yet oddly sincere. What the fuck about uh, Sharknado is sincere? Mm -hmm. um... It is... I have watched a review of Sharknado. I have seen footage from this movie. There is nothing sincere about this fucking movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. And I'm guessing the game's going to come out the same day, because fuck it. <laughs> it's a mobile game. I can get it out quick. Oh. Why? Why? That's all I can say. Why? <coughs> As I cough into the mic very loudly. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I, I got nothing else. That's it. I just, not, we're moving on. Unless you have something else to say. Uh-uh. 
Alright. Well, we have sad news. Another developer has bitten the dust. All right, games is down for the count. Uh, uh, do, 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 do. a recent visit to Rich, uh, to Redmond, Washington offices of All Right Games by GeekWire revealed the startling find. The company seems to have gone out of business. Hmm. Wow, GeekWire went there. <laughs> Found the offices closed and a sign on the door advertising a blowout sale on the equipment inside. Wow. Subsequent uh, attempts to reach the studio have gone unanswered. In April, the studio had laid off 14 employees as part of what it's called necessary restructuring. So... Assembled on the heels of All Right releasing its latest game, Merge Soul Suspect. So essentially, the necessary restructuring was fancy talk for we're shutting down. Apparently, this is what happened. The they were also responsible for Capcom's Dark Void, Ouya Road like Soul Fjord, and the Cam Swift developed uh, puzzler Quantum Conundrum. So yeah, the All Right Games is down after Birds Soul Suspect. I'm assumed did not go well. Because yeah, you know how we were excited for this game? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's decided to go, oh, uh, yeah, we're, uh... Uh, yeah, we're not gonna really capitalize on this brilliant idea we have, and just gonna be boring a little bit. Jeez. Yeah, it, it, yeah, Game Freer's review was not glowing, let's just say that. The only review I've really checked out, but yeah, yeah Mercial Suspect did not go well. <laughs> I'm sure sales numbers are really not that good. Obviously, if they're out of business. Yeah. But, yeah, that's, a, that's another game down for the count. And also another company down for the count after a detective game. I'm sensing a bad trend. <laughs> the L.A. Noir's developers went down after that game got, got released. Yeah, but it was a good game. I know! That's why I'm saying detective game. I'm like, oh no, this is a bad trend. If if this is when it happens, what does it happen when the next detective game gets released? Oh god. What if this affects the Phoenix Wright franchise? Nah. Oh, oh no. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, alright, alright, games is gone. Bad to see them go. Alright. No, I didn't realize that Shaq News had a redesign until right now. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh. Well. Who wants another simulator <sighs> game? I can't believe you're fucking half and you fucking ended up putting this one in here. Well, there there's two reasons we're putting this is in here. One, it's Cow Simulator 2014. Secondly, this is a demo for the Divinity Original Soul Engine. Yes, they made a simulator game to demo their engine. Uh, Divinity Original So uh, will be out in Storm with to Steam Early Access, I think, last week, since this article was June 28th, and it says next week. Uh, they get to witness the Divinity Engine in action, in hopes that the developers will find a widespread use for the engine. The studio is offering a playground for users to practice modding. Playground is Cow Simulator 2014. An example mod built with the Divinity Engine Toolkit assets. Users can modify the farmland environment to create entire gaming experiences from the ground up, including single and multiplayer adventures, dialogue ranches, and AI behavior. Why is these things being said with a, with a game that has a simulator word in it? Why? Because it's cow simulator. You get to have multiplayer adventures where one person is the cow, the other person is the butcher trying to kill the cow. 
Are you joking, or are you being legitimate? I'm joking. Although, that's probably legitimate. I was about to say, I see a cow, <laughs> I see blood, and I see a chunk of something. Dear God, please tell me you're actually joking. And this is not one of those situations of, yes, we're joking, except we're somehow telling the truth. <laughs> Unintentionally. <laughs> What's bad was that all literally came off the top of my head, but I have a bad feeling someone's already done that. Although I wouldn't know how to work the dialogue branches into it. Various forms of moo. <laughs> Butcher, do you want me to kill you? Cow. <laughs> Wait, which moo was that? Was that the, the the slightly enthusiastic moo or the sarcastic moo? Moo. <laughs> okay, now I don't. I don't truly. My. What, oh my. <laughs> oh God, we're making too much fun out of this. Uh -oh. oh god damn it no that isn't that isn't the thing <laughs> oh god zero forty nine in the video <laughs> look at those dialogue op choice options moo ma me <laughs> <laughs> mm. are we watching the trailer please tell you know me what? we're Fuck watching it. the trailer Fuck it, we're watching it. <laughs> I'm just gonna skip through and just pick apart things, but no, we're watching this. Oh god. Oh, okay. oh god, help us. <laughs> I'm ready. Alright, kicking this video off in 3, 2, 1, go. Also, Mass Effect called, they want their music back. <laughs> A lot of moo. Yes. And that sheep just did a, did a flip. For no reason. Yes! Burn all the sheep! Burn them all! As they disintegrate to nothing. You're up. Wow. Was that a giant spider? That was a giant spider. No. Well, you mean soccer, right? I, I don't know what the... I, I don't know. I don't know what to say anymore. <sighs> it, why, are, why are simulator games a thing? But I'm not gonna lie. Every time I see a simulator game, I'm like, this is a shitty game. Why is this popular? Honestly speaking, I think it literally comes down to the ability to mod it. Yeah. And it, it essentially, I'm assuming it comes down to fill in the blank simulator games are essentially a fancier Minecraft. You mod it, you change it, you play something completely separate from it. Don't think that applies to Surgeon Simulator. Although that has a TF2 crossover. That might be the only one that gets away from that. But that game is pure rage. And that's the reason this, all this shit exists! It's because of Surgeon Simulator. It's because Surgeon Simulator did that is all the, is why all these, all these simulator games exist now. True. What the... What the, what the, what the 
you know, Dorkley had a Dorkley made a comic where they had this fish where these uh game developers had this shitty fishing game that they were trying to sell, but they knew they couldn't. One guy had the brilliant idea of making the simulator game. Now no one will care that it's a shitty ass game. <laughs> and you know, that's supposed to be funny. But yet look at them. You, you, you seriously can't tell me that these games aren't kind of shitty. Version mm -hmm. Simulator has terrible controls. Terrible controls. Yes, but that game was built to make people rage. <laughs> I'm almost convinced of that. Really? Yes. <laughs> From what I've seen, it's supposed to make drunk people laugh. That too. I just, uh, I don't know. I, I just don't don't like this whole idea of like, well, yes, it's a simulator game, so it gets away with being a shitty game because it's a simulator game. No, no, it doesn't. If it's a shitty game, it's a shitty game. Mm -hmm. You you yeah, don't get but... around that. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it, it, it's a simulator game. It's supposed to be shitty. The question is, is it the good kind of shitty or the bad kind of shitty? The good kind That's of shitty gets popular for being the good kind of shitty. The bad kind of shitty just gets called shitty. Mm. Alright. <laughs> hey, anything else before we move on? Uh-uh. Alright. Next up. Batman Arkham Knight has a release date. Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> we are looking at a February 24th, 2015 release. According to... Microsoft. Yes, because Microsoft had to be stupid. And son of a bitch, IGN. IGN. Kyle, what the hell was that? IGN News. Oh, video? Yes. I've gotten into the habit of pausing that shit. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, you are not out of playing things on my article. Leave me alone. I want to read. Yo, sometimes I want to read things on the internet instead of watch. Because, you know, I want to. Now, uh... Okay, this is something interesting here. They put in there, while it could just be a placeholder date, those are usually positioned at the end of a quarter. This is like dead center of a quarter. It's also on the same day as Witcher 3. Yeah. This Which... seems far too specific to just say, oh, it could be a placeholder date. I think this possibly could be someone screwed up and hit the wrong button. Yeah. Or possibly hit the right button, wanting to see if it took correctly, and someone else caught it beforehand. Yeah. Of course, I don't know if that hurts either game. Like, if it hurts anything, I think it hurts Witcher 3, because, well... How many people know Batman? How many people know about The Witcher? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, mm. I don't know. Yeah. Well, there is one good thing. What? I'll be, I'll be able to actually buy the game. They'll have cash then. <laughs> I'll have to worry about getting and having try to get another game this year. <laughs> oh, yay. Yay, you. Alright. <laughs> right. Uh, Next up. Evolves. Oh. Yes. 
Yeah, I gotta oh. come load it. Can can load load it. <laughs> come on, IGN, you're, you're ruining the flow. I'm loading, loading, loading. Well, you know, it's kind of a case of, um, yeah, uh, in light of what already happened, I'm trying not to load any more than I have to. Uh -huh. Especially when it comes to fucking IGN and their fucking <laughs> videos on everything. Yes, because people want video content with their, with their uh, reading content. I knew you were going to do that. Okay, that's odd. What? To open up both articles that were IGN, mm -hmm. that way we could transition better. Mm -hmm. The one obviously is a video, but the other one didn't have a video. Uh, that's because there's no video on there except for the E3 Kraken stuff. Yeah, kind of odd. Mm hmm. But, anyhow, off to Evolve. Yep. Alright. Evolve's PC, PC Alpha is sign-upable. Mm. Uh, you know that's not Manager. a word, right? I know. <laughs> Have we not established that I make up words all willy-nilly because I can? Mm -hmm. True. Uh... Uh, Total Rock Community Manager Jesse Derma gave the password required. Happy hunting along with his, with a referral ID. Join the hunt on Twitter. An attached promotional image states uh, participants should not disclose details of the alpha and that the studio is aiming to have the participant list finalized by this Saturday, July 5th, a.k.a. last week. You need to be a resident of the U.S. or Canada and have a Steam account to participate. So, uh, essentially, they just went... Okay. Who wants an alpha? Here's the password. Here's the referral ID. Uh, we'll pick a list by Saturday. Hmm. I will say, it's a, it's quite the different way of having people sign up for an alpha. Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of hope that leads into uh, open beta. Of course, we won't be hearing anything officially from Alpha. Yeah. Because of the NDA stuff. Yeah. Which I'm sure Locke was all disappointed about off somewhere where he can hear this. Where he's probably not listening to it. Probably. <laughs> because he's either A asleep or B at work. Yes. Because C, neither one of us know. Mm. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. Okay, if we knew about the sooner, we would have hopped in on that alpha, but yeah. We'll hop in on the eventual closed beta or open beta when that comes out. <laughs> yeah, By the time alpha. we know about the closed beta, we'll get in at like the last week of the closed beta as it or transitions right to an open beta. AKA our experience with Transformers Universe. And Hearthstone. Yep. <laughs> we did it with both of them. We're the last to get in things, because we're special that way. <laughs> Alright. Any other thoughts on this before we move on? Uh-uh. Except for I should have moved the next article up quite a few. But I wasn't thinking. Yep. We're going past, back to the Master Chief Collection with a brand new trailer for the terminals that you'll be collecting in Halo 2 Anniversary. Cute up, Brady. I don't know why I went for an accent with that one. I don't know either. <laughs> Alright, take a look at the trailer then in 3, 2, 1, go. Halo Waypoint! Nobody uses me anymore! Ever! I have had many names in this long war. The 
humans knew me as destroyer. In the Covenant, I was Supreme Commander. The Prophets named me Arbiter. And your Master Chief calls me Friend. Say what I was telling you yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I swear that makes it sound as if the Arbiter has partnered up with the Didact. It, it, it might just be he's talking about his past mm -hmm. and, and not what he's done in like the last like three years. But yeah, that <sighs> hits people up. Me and Tommy were having this conversation about this trailer. Essentially, you know, essentially we ended up on this idea that 343 is possibly going to take Mr. Uh, Agent... What's his name? Locke. Locke. Mm -hmm. Agent Locke will be replacing Arbiter as Chief Sidekick. Mm -hmm. and, and after that trailer, I'm kind of having bad feelings that 343's plotting to kind of tear apart everything Bungie set up with the Arbiter. Which uh, I equated this to this is going to be like the whole Raiden situation with Mega Solid 2, except worse because it'll be like if Solid Snake turned heel. Which is dumb. Now, given what I said there, mm-hmm, Keep in mind, I was basing that solely off of what we know from the games thus far. Mm -hmm. However, you did kind of bring up a very valid point that's never really addressed in 4. As it currently yep. stands, what's left of the Covenant is in a civil war. Well, what's left of the elites is in a civil war. Like I said, pretty much what's left of the Covenant. <laughs> yes. Because the elites that we partnered with in 3 also had grunts. Yeah. So. And, dur and during the course of this little elite civil war, essentially, the Arbiter has been on Infinity. He has interacted, I assume, with people we've interacted with in Halo 4 through Chief. So... If you go off of external sources, more than likely, that's not going to happen. But yeah, yeah. As far as I know, external sources don't like to be referenced in the games at all. Like its own little universe. Because there is, as far as the books are concerned. There is a whole team of Spartans that the Chief was over on Reach that you never hear about in the game. Yeah. There's no reference to them whatsoever. Hell, there's, another, there's an entire team of Spartans in UNSC personnel that are stuck in, stuck in a world similar to Requiem. Now, see, like, something like that, there's a possibility... They could bring that in with the Forerunner trilogy yeah. or saga, but no, that's what... but like I was saying about that whole team from Reach, Reach was glassed. Yeah. So there really is going to be no reference back to that. Yeah. Halo Reach was Bungie's one shot at being able to reference back to the novels, and they didn't do it. Yeah, and they could have done it with the Halo 3 Legendary ending, because people were speculating that the world Chief was going towards was that world I was just talking about, where that Spartan team is. Nope. Completely different world. Because uh, we, we can't really feature other Spartans in this series until now, 
And it's not even the same Spartans we've come to know. Because, uh, like I said that back when we originally talked about Halo 4 stories, the Spartans are less like this specialized unit and are less like these specialized soldiers and more just a specialized unit. Yeah. And like a class of soldiers. Not super soldiers, just soldiers. Because uh, if you watch the, the legendary ending, I forget her, I always forget her name, but the female Spartan you see throughout the game, she is so much shorter than Chief. Every, Chief towers over everyone. And there are Spartans all over that place, and he towers over everybody. Yeah. Which also gets in that whole point of he should be wearing his old armor just to have, just so that little dichotomy is ever more present and shows this old war horse, you know, you know how beaten and battered Chief as, as this old war horse is. But anyway. Well, in a sense, he still kind of is wearing the same armor we saw him with in 2. I know. I can't say from CE because... At the beginning of two, he did get the upgrade. Yeah, I mean, I I won't deny that there it's supposed to be the same armor because it has all the same markings. It shows all the same damage that you see mighty in the three. My thing is, it doesn't look like the armor. It looks like all the other Spartans' armors. Yeah, it looks like a newer armor. Yeah, it when it's not. <laughs> I think it would have been fine with them tweaking the looks of everything else. Yeah. But they really should have kept Chief's armor at least patterned like it. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously give it some new textures. Obviously bring it up to speed with the game. But don't make it look like a newer one. Make it still look like the old blocky... Mark II that we were used to seeing. Hmm. But, yeah. Yeah, it's just... But this whole thing with Arbiter, it just feels so... If they are going to turn him heel, it's going to be such a just departure from the character. I have a feeling if they turn him heel... That will kill the story. Like, completely kill the story, and you will more than likely have Halo fans consider Halo 3 the ending. Mm -hmm. With Reach being the beginning. And they will completely write off everything that 343 has done. <sighs> yeah, that's a possibility. And when that happens, that will be the end of Halo. Yeah. So, that's one of those they kind of got to walk that fine line. Yeah. The way they played that out sounds like they're turning him heel. Which I think is the absolute wrong thing to do. I think now is, like, the best time ever to have a proper co-op of Halo. Like a true, proper co-op. I could completely see, okay. You got Chief, obviously. Yeah. You're starting to see a little bit more about the Arbiter. So we know he's going to be coming back before too long. Agent Locke is getting his own little, like, live-action thing. And... He's more than likely going to be a split part of Halo 5. Yeah. Kind of like how Arbiter was in 2. So, there's 3. All they'd have to do is in 6, introduce a fourth character and build that one. Then Our you've character. got a complete team for co-op. Yeah. Or hell, add in anyone that got introduced in 4. 
That'd you know, be a we, little we, harder. Well, 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 how about this? Your, your character from Spartan Ops is the fourth character, and they flesh him out. I, still I know think that'd, be, that'd a bit, be a little bit of yeah. a stretch. I, I think it would benefit if they introduced a fourth character. That way, there you would have that interaction. Yeah. Because really, the Spartan Ops characters, they're all just kind of there to run the ops and be done. Well, what about the other Spartans that are in the cutscenes? But what about one of them? <laughs> or better yet, Halsey in a mech suit. No. <laughs> oh, come on. Bring June back. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a good one, too. Mm -hmm. Hell, June's probably doing dick fucking all right now. Mm -hmm. That's important. We don't even know what he's doing. Yeah. But we know he has to be alive. And see, bring anybody... How better than to bring in someone that you've already done the backstory for? Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, granted, yes, 343 did not have any major hand in Reach. But still, the backstory's sitting there for him. Mm -hmm. He's the only one of Noble Team that is unaccounted for. And he's assumed to be alive, seeing as how Halsey's alive. So, <laughs> why not? And plus, you've got, you've got the perfect team layout. You've got the leader-in-chief and kind of the all-around guy. You've got a close-quarters expert in Arbiter. You've got a technical expert in Locke because he's an Oni officer. So he's like tactical strategist expert kind of guy, I would assume. And then you've got your sharpshooter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the perfect team makeup. Mm -hmm. How is it, it, like, come a year from now, we're going to be writing a better Halo 5 than 343? Because 343 is owned by Microsoft. I don't have to say any more. Literally. Alright. Any other thoughts before we move on? Mm, no. Alrighty then. Next up, something I was kind of surprised to hear about. The final Halo 3 Easter egg, according to Bungie, has been uncovered seven years after its release. Possibly the final one. Well, they've been hinting at a final Easter egg, and this was going to be it. Possibly. Wait, you think they're still holding, uh, holding out on us on something? I think anything's possible, and we know how Bungie is. You, th you think they've laid some deep, dark secret within Halo 3 that's, like, so shocking that they can't even hint at it? I don't think it's so much that. I think it's just they like fucking with people. <laughs> To be, to be fair, that's any, like, really good developer's trait, is they just want to screw with their fans because they have that kind of relationship with their fans. <laughs> like, any developer that has a good relationship with their fans is not afraid to screw with them. And just throw out all sorts of fun misdirections or anything like that. But yeah, uh, essentially it is a, I'm trying to find where the article says it, that kind of, the, uh, on December 25th, if you hold down both thumbs on the main menu, the screen will zoom out to show a halo ring concealing from, uh, coalescing, coalescing from mist. Uh, the player discovers that there's a hidden message embedded in the ring, and if you look at it really close, it can you can see Happy Birthday Lauren written on the side. Now, we can play the video, and I didn't catch all of it, but I did catch the last part of it. Yeah, I've, I've, I saw it like normal speed, and I saw it slow down, and 
The only thing I can catch is fucking Lauren. I don't see That's where people I are saying catch. happy birthday. Mm -hmm. That's all I could catch. So I, I don't, I don't know. Um, wish I could get it bigger. Uh, employee Adrian Prez responded, showing my wife the Easter egg I put in the Halo 3 loading screen for her. The one that nobody has found out yet. Has found yet. <laughs> uh... And as you said in another Q and A, a bunch of community managers say you will never find them all. We can't give any, can't give you any hints. If we do, those a those eggs would lose their magic. So they're magic eggs. Yes, they are truly magical magic eggs. Give us a PC port. Ten bucks says we'll find all the Easter eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Give anybody a PC port of Halo, Halo 3 and a Halo 3 in four hours, they will have that code crap. They will break that code apart into bits and pieces. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that's what Microsoft needs to step up and do. They need to say, we're doing a Halo 3 port. Hell, yeah. I know damn good and well people would sit for, hell, two years even if they wanted to take that damn long port in it. Just let us know you're doing it, please. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. They won't port Halo 3. You know what they will do? Port Halo 4. Nope. <laughs> what? They'll, they'll port the Master Chief Collection. Honestly, I'd be fine with that. <laughs> that way it's a four for one deal. <laughs> I would be fine with that. Simply because CE needs a graphical update, number one. Halo 2 needs an update. That's about all that can be said. That needs that all-around work. Yeah. And everyone wants Halo 3. Yeah, everyone's got Halo 4, so we ain't got to worry about that one. Uh, I, I think Halo 4's kind of put everyone on edge. Well, of course, it's, one, it's, made those, by... it's one of those stories, all right. We'll give it to them on that, but yeah. Well, it kind of breaks down to it's done by done by three four three, not Bungie. Yeah, that that's really the biggest thing right there. All right, let's take a look at this Easter egg then. All right, starting right. up in three. I was going to say ready when you are, but you went into it anyhow, oh. so. Alright, starting up. Three, two, one, go. Okay, that time I caught the birthday part, too. Yeah, I caught that, too. It, it's... It's because it kind of... I don't know. Oh, okay, it. yeah. I, I, I saw it that time. Yeah. If you look close enough, you can catch the Y. For okay. sure. I think the problem is it's kind of has this... I don't know what the word for it is. Camouflaging effect? Where it goes all the same color and then sometimes it has the, the letters... Uh, become different and become a different shade of color to stand out. Yeah. So it's kind of so it kind of is coming in and out, even after it's materialized, which makes it even more difficult to read. <laughs> so how the fuck anyone got happy birthday, Lauren, at, on on this? I don't know unless you go frame by frame on your recorded footage at like 1080p with a magnifying glass. For the happy part, yes. They'd have to. Yeah. But I caught Birthday and Lauren at the end of it there. Yeah, I, I caught I, I saw it that time. I looked at that the first time, though, and I was like, okay, I kind of can see something at the end there. I wasn't even catching it all of it then, but it's like the more you're watching it, the more you kind of can see it. Yeah.
All right. Yeah, you know, that that's kind of surprising there. Well, take care of our articles for this week. At clocking in at about an hour and a half. Because we didn't get off on any tirades this time. No, not yet. No, not yet. And that shall move us into releases for the upcoming week. I hope you didn't have any videos. What, me? Yes. No. Okay. We should be good. Then. Nope. No minor pictures. Remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have video yet. We're not that lucky. Yeah, no. Damn it. <laughs> All right. Picking up on the 14th. I believe it's this Thursday? On the 14th? Oh no, Monday. Really? Yeah. We're that far out with them? This time? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, game trailers. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, coming, out on, coming out the 14th on the Vita. One Piece Unlimited. World Red. A GameStop exclusive. I have not heard anything about this game. You, you think I would, because I've watched a lot of One Piece. Although I haven't gotten back to it in a while. Uh, coming out on the 16th, Magic 2015 Duels of the Plane Walkers on the Xbox Live Arcade. In the PC. I'm actually surprised it's already time for 2015. Yeah. I would complain about not getting a Yu-Gi-Oh game, but I got, but I have Yu-Gi-Oh Pro for free. Mm. <sighs> well, I have Yu-Gi-Oh Pro. It's free. It has all the cards in there. It has anime cards. It's got, you know, it's got cards from the show and the manga, and even like cards that are never supposed to be used in an actual duel. Like a card that turns your deck upside down, and you have to play the game like that for the rest of the until the cards destroyed or the duel ends. Huh. Yeah, you're, literally, you and your opponent turn your deck upside down and you play. Mm -hmm. So each one of you know what you're drawing. Huh. I thought about putting that in the deck and just dueling somebody and just w and playing that card and waiting for their reaction. <laughs> just to be a dick. Mm -hmm. uh, next up on the PC and Ouya. So many me. On the 17th. Mm. It's kind of surprising that the Ouya finally is in the platform list now. Kind of. And it's re and it's really kind of getting stuff there. Eventually. And well, finally on the 24th. Uh, in the limited world red one piece. Uh, on the eShop for the Wii U. And literally that's it. And next time we're looking at another four. Wow. Literally. And if we're talking just games, three. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. It's it's that summer gaming drought once more. Again. Which shall bring us to quick draws for the week. Which First up. Yours is. Common Rider Drive and his Drive Driver. Now, Common Rider Drive will be the next writer show to come out after Gaim ends. Either, I think, like, so I think our best estimate right now is end of September, beginning of October, due to Gashapon releases for the toys. Of whatever the gimmick for Drive is. Which I'm guessing is going to be keys. Mm -hmm. Based off uh, this little sketch we have because uh, we have an on-site picture. Which is the second one. I probably should have listed that one first. But I found them in reverse order. Uh, we finally got an on-set shot of Drive. And that he's that red and silver thing standing there. Yeah. Who's fighting, I assume, one of the monsters of the week mm -hmm. uh, for a show. Now, the the thing with all the text and the 
picture is a somewhat uh, interpretation of the things that he saw on site. So we have Commodore Drive. He's got a sports mufflers on the side of his head and I assume headlights on top and a grill visor. I, I assume what that that's what it is. He's got the uh, a tire uh, sash, which might change depending on form. Who knows? Uh, we have a mini car key brace, uh, like Tokyo Changer from uh, Russia Sentai Tokyo Changer, the Sentai show airing alongside Gaim and will be airing alongside Drive. So I guess they want to try to link gimmicks together. Full on. Oh. Well, that would be odd to do because you have a Sentai show being shared with two writer shows and the opposite of that is true as well, so that would be kind of hard. I mean, it means that you don't have to do the same gimmick for two years, essentially. Kind of. But maybe they're figuring that they can do a Tokyo Your Drive crossover and kind of make some kind of a joke between them using each other's thing i guess although tokyo Future uses trains and drive uses cars but okay uh the belt has three mini car keys on it which i'm guessing might be related to either form changes or some type of arsenal thing who knows the drive driver because that is legitimately a thing uh the bracelet is the brace is linked with the driver via infrared a technology that is well utilized in Rider by this point, as Oz and the, uh, Wizard both used it for their toys. Uh, we have a car within a car, apparently. Which it can go from sports car mode to four wheel drive card mode. And I have a bulldoze mode and a no bike that has no sort of related images that I'm not sure what is. And a 360 rotation on the back end that I'm not sure about. So apparently, like, the car can split into two, I guess? Or, like, you can inject out a smaller car? Possibly, yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll say this might be the first time we have a rider without a bike. If you don't count Shin, because I don't think he has a bike. I don't think. I'm not entirely sure. I know Zeno and Jay both have bikes. They're the, only, they're the only ones I'm unsure of. But this is not the first time a rider has a car. Has had a car. Black RX has a car. So, uh, yeah. A anyone getting up in arms about Drive having a car? I don't see why. Having no bike? Eh, it's a nice car. And the uh, the onset photo gets us a side shot of it. Which it is a uh, Acura NSX. It's something that's been used as a police car in Japan. Hmm. Which it also has the back end of a Corvette. <laughs> <laughs> and it actually does look like a Corvette, just heavily modified. Not gonna lie, because <laughs> it's got that square, that uh, like sloped square back end that a Corvette's got. And honestly, that's what I thought it was because it looked like a Corvette to me. <laughs> if you just put in a, because uh, it just looked like it had a different front end on it, and like the canopy looked a little bit different, but I'm like, ah, oh, maybe it's like a different. Uh, like a weird, like, modified Corvette. Because, you know, people do that. Right. But no, it's, uh, it's the Acura NSX, or the Nissan NXX, uh, NSX, whichever way you want to call it. Yeah, we got our first onset shots. We've got descriptions of various suit-related things. And we're probably not going to hear dick fucking all until, like, two weeks from now. At least. Because uh, this came out, what, like two weeks ago? That's we, we got, we literally, uh, think, no, we got, yeah, we got this uh, after we stopped uh, streaming Monday. Uh, two weeks ago on Monday. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> literally, this broke news then. And we haven't heard dick all since then, so yeah. 
Hopefully, hopefully we hear more. Maybe we'll hear something soon. Doubt it. Gonna yeah, be Gaim all day, every day. <laughs> oh yeah, because we're hitting that downward spiral for everything to happen at once. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. Drive news happening. Can't wait to hear more. So, Tommy, what is your quick draw? My quick draw is actually the League of Legends Howling Abyss event that we are hosting. The, as you can see, apparently is all over the site right now. Um, <laughs> I guess it's even got a banner up there. Yes. Fancy, fancy banner. All kinds of banners. Um, this event is the a Howling Abyss non aram event. I gotta kind of stress that part of it. Yeah. Uh, it will be running tournament draft settings and is open to not only teams of five, but also uh, free agents that want to join. Uh, rules and everything can be found on the site simply by file clicking on the little banner up there beside our logo. Uh, prizes for the event. First place has got 3,200 riot points and the triumphant rise skin for each player. Second place is 2,400 riot points per player. Third is 1,600 and fourth is 800. This event will be taking place August 1st and we will be trying to stream as many matches as we can from it which means that no rampant gaming that week pretty much <laughs> yeah unless it gets done a hell of a lot quicker than I think it will but yeah if you got a team join if not Work on getting you a team or sign up solo. And more information will be coming about any kind of a uh, little draft round that will take place prior to the event as we get closer and see how many people sign up solo. So, yeah. Anything else to add? One question, though. Okay. What is that champion next to Misfortune? Uh, Darius, I want to say. Okay. I didn't recognize it. I'm like, who is that? We got Misfortune, got Garen, got Lissandra, and then, then yeah. Or wait, not Lissandra. But that's uh. No, that's uh. Oh, what is her name? Fuck! I got I, the I... images, and I still don't remember. Ah, uh, I know Sandra. she can talk. Yeah, Sandra. I was about to say, it's the one that can throw around minions with her <laughs> black orbs of energy and whatnot. Right. And, and see, Riot, I can grab other champion pictures and actually make banners with it. I ain't got to use the same five every time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what, Riot loves to do that? Yes. <laughs> But Too much. But what's the five? Uh, I know generally Annie winds up in most of it. Well, you got the cute factor there. Yeah. I can't remember right offhand. But there's like five, maybe six champions that they always kind of end up using for their group pictures. It always oh. seems to be that way. Aw. And it's like, ugh. <laughs> I know Garen doesn't really get used in pro play. Which seems odd, because he's like one of the mascots of the game. Yeah. Like, Caitlyn is like a heavy use one. Jinx is now. Uh, I saw Yasuo get uh, a couple shots, but he's got you got to have a team comp around him to really utilize him. Yeah. That or you just get, like, just like to go, fuck it, I'm going to play really dangerous. 
which is what I found out the first time, uh, first real time I got to play him in Aram is, yeah, you live on the edge all game with him. <laughs> you were, you just put yourself in constant danger. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think who else? Brom's really been a really been a staple recently because he's like this support tank character that could just you can just do all sorts of things with. Yeah. Uh, I think I've seen Fiora. This all comes from my L LCS watching uh, like Sunday, which I think there should be a new round coming soon, or like this weekend. So. More league pro watching. I'm watching uh, pros play league. <laughs> kind of interesting to watch. But, all right. Uh, anything else? Mm, no. All right, then. That shall close us out for this week as I am distracted by Guy Figuarts on Twitter. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Which is nothing new, really. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing really new. But anyway, yes, close us out this week. So tune in tomorrow as we have uh, another look at the season one of Yu-Gi-Oh! And I'll probably talk about my marathoning of 14 episodes of 5Ds. <laughs> and plus more by the time I get done tonight, because I'll probably be like through 30 at by the time tonight and eh, by the time uh, tomorrow morning happens. <laughs> more than likely. Oh boy. I'm sorry, I'm having too much fun with 5Ds. It's like I'm watching Arc V, but it's not Arc V. It's just that quality of show. It's, it's just that kind of quality show. I'm just enjoying it. For a show that has that stigma of card games on motorcycles, it's actually a goddamn it's actually a damn fine show. <laughs> because it goes, why yes, it's card games on motorcycles, but at least we're gonna have fun with this shit. <laughs> we're gonna make it interesting. <laughs> uh... Yeah. Until so then, for Tommy, I'm peace. Good night, everybody. We just shall see you tomorrow. As always, you can find the Gaming Saloon on our site at tgstgsr.org. Don't forget to follow us on our social medias, on Twitter by following at TG Saloon, on Facebook at facebook.com slash thegamingsaloon, and on YouTube at youtube.com slash tgsaloon. Till next time.